Hi, in this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to create snake scales. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The Poly Quadratic Spline node generates a spline along several points that you can place directly in the node or using a point list node. Use points amount to control the amount of points to build the spline. Points properties are used to control the height, smoothness and thickness of the spline segments. Points coordinate sets the position of the points in texture space. The spline mapper grayscale node maps a grayscale input image along the input splines. Use segments amount to control the mapping smoothness along splines. With UV scale, I adjust the scale of the mapped coordinates to control how densely tiled the image is. Thickness mode allows you to use the thickness information previously built. Manual sets the thickness explicitly with a value while from spline uses the thickness of the input spline. Use twist UV's intensity to control the twisting of the image coordinates around the cylinder. It just works when shape is set to half cylinder or cylinder. The dot portal is a helper that lets you simplify and clean up graphs by rerouting and grouping connections. A pair of dot nodes can be used as portals to hide a connection. Name is used to name the dot node. Under input portal I choose the receiver's input portal. Let's build the snake scale setup together. You can reuse it later as starting point for more complex ones. For the base shape we choose a shape node. Lower the scale to 0.7 and tweak the angle to 45. To scale it slightly we use a transformation to D node. Switch the tiling mode to no tiling and reduce the width to 70%. Let's use a non-uniform blur node to blur it with itself. We increase the intensity to 20, the samples to 9 and the blades to 7 for a smoother quality. Now we connect it to a blend node. Reduce the opacity to 0.7, change the mode to subtract and use a gradient linear one node as foreground to layer it over the shape. A tile generator is great to array the scales by switching the pattern to image input. Let's change first the blending mode to max for a nice blending. Increase the scale to 3, offset it with a value of 0.5, rotate it 270 degrees to follow the spline later on and forward it into a blend node. For the bottom of the snake we add a gradient linear 2 node. Connect it to a transformation 2D node and manually move the handle to around 35% in height. Then we forward it to a blend node. As foreground we use a 90 degrees rotated gradient linear 1 node with a tiling of 10. We use a blur HQ grayscale node and blur it slightly with an intensity of 2. Let's switch the mode to multiply and lower the opacity to 0.35. Now we use it as foreground of the other blend node. To get the mask we use a histogram scan node with a position value of 0.9 for a sharper border. Use a blur HQ grayscale node with an intensity of 5 to blur it and connect it to the opacity input of the blend node. Now we add a spline polyquadratic and increase the points amount to 10. Let's build a nice S curved snake shape with more points where the head of the snake would be. To see the thickness of the spline we activate show thickness envelope. Let's tweak the thickness and height of our snake by adjusting the points properties of each individual point. To get the right height we start with a value of 0 for P1 and increase it towards the head. The last point will have again a height of 0. To map the structure over the spline we add a spline mapper grayscale node and join the spline outputs to it. As color map input we use the blend node output and add a curve node to the twist curve input. Let's increase the segments amount to 128 for a smoother spline. Change the thickness mode to from spline and the shape to cylinder to add twisting. Then we increase the twist UV's intensity and twist UV's curve multiplier to 1 to use our curve. The twist UV's curve offset slider we have to adjust while tweaking the points of our curve. We now have the structure and the height of the snake along the spline. For a nice rounded height profile we duplicate the spline mapper. As height we use the already existing gradient linear 2 node. 
Let's join it to a dot node which now has a great new portal function. We rename it to gradient. Then we add another dot node and connect it to the height input. We can simply choose gradient in the drop down menu which connects the two dot nodes without having links overlap with the setup. Now we switch the shape to plane. Get rid of the spline height multiplier and increase the input height multiplier to 1 to map the gradient correctly along the spline. Finally we just have to blend the individual height maps together. We join the gradient height to a blend node and use the other height output as foreground with an opacity of 0.7 in multiply blending mode. Now we connect it to another blend node and use the color output as foreground. A low opacity of 0.25 with the mode multiply is nice to bring in the structure details. With this setup I can now go back to my original spline, change its shape and have the scales automatically follow the new path. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graph shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comment. See you in the next quick tip episode.